Who would win a fight between the legendary barbarian lion and the king of the northern land, the polar bear? The Barbary lion, also known as the Atlas lion, is an African lion subspecies, formerly native to North Africa, including the Atlas Mountains, that is now considered extinct in the wild. Polar bear, also called the white bear, sea bear or ice bear, great white northern bear is found throughout the Arctic region. Both were and are apex predators in their range. Being such strong animals, what do you think would happen if they came face to face and had to fight? Let's find out. First of all, let's talk about their size and appearance. The Barbary lion was once thought to be one of the largest lion subspecies, if not the largest of all lions and African felidae. Male Barbary lion museum specimens were described as having very dark and long-haired manes that extended over the shoulder and to the belly. Stuffed males range in length from 7.8 to 9.2 feet from head to tail, 2.4 to 2.8 meters. A 19th century hunter described large accounts of the weight of wild males as very heavy, ranging from 600 to 660 pounds, 270 to 300 kilograms. Because temperatures in the Atlas Mountains are much lower than in other African regions, particularly in winter, Barbary lions may have developed long-haired manes. Polar bears are the world's largest carnivorous land mammals. They are approximately 7 to 8 feet, 2.1 to 2.4 meters long, from the tip of their very short tail. A large one can weigh over 1,700 pounds, 771 kilograms. Many of the polar bear's physical adaptations help it keep warm and deal with its icy environment. The outside layer of fur on the bear is hollow and reflects light, giving the fur a white color that aids in camouflage. The skin beneath the polar bear's fur is actually black. Polar bears also have a thick layer of fat beneath the skin that acts as insulation on the body, trapping heat. Polar bears have powerful legs and large flattened feet with some webbing between their toes, which helps them swim and walk on ice. Now let's see if these animals could have met in the wild. Barbary lions lived in the Atlas Mountains range countries, including the Barbary Coast. By the mid-19th century, their numbers had significantly decreased. By 1890, the last survivors in Tunisia had been wiped out. Barbary lions were thought to have become extinct in the wild in the early 20th century, in the 1970s. A thorough review of hunting and sighting records, however, indicates that the last Barbary lion was shot in the Moroccan Atlas Mountains in 1942. Barbary lions were spotted in Morocco and Algeria until the 1950s, and small remnant populations may have survived in remote areas until the early 1960s. Polar bears are mostly found north of the Arctic Circle, all the way to the North Pole. Polar bears can be found in Alaska, Canada, Russia, Greenland, and some Norwegian-owned northern islands. Polar bears rely on sea ice that forms above open waters. When sea ice is unavailable, they will spend time on land. Polar bears are excellent swimmers and can swim long distances between the shore and the sea ice if necessary. Polar bears frequently swim between floating ice islands during periods of ice breakup. Permanent, multi-year ice that never melts is more important to polar bears than annual ice that melts and reforms every year. This multi-year ice is becoming increasingly rare, but it will likely last longer in the island archipelago of northwestern Canada than in Alaska or off Russia's northern coast. Now let's see how and what they hunt. Big cats are all carnivores with a preference for large prey. In the Atlas Mountains, they fed on Barbary stag and gazelle, and elsewhere on red deer and wild boar. When these became scarce, they would attack domestic livestock on farms, such as sheep and cattle. This frequently resulted in a lethal confrontation with humans, 
determined to protect their livelihoods. Unfortunately, their hunting methods were never accurately documented, but it is assumed that, like the Asiatic lion, they would strangle their prey and divide the kill amongst their pride. Polar bears, unlike other bear species, eat almost entirely meat. They primarily consume ringed seals, but may also consume bearded seals. Polar bears hunt seals by waiting for them to surface to breathe on the sea ice. When the seal gets close to the surface, the polar bear will bite or grab it and drag it onto land to feed. They also consume whale and walrus carcasses. Polar bears will seek out bird eggs and other food sources, but none of these are plentiful enough to support polar bears' large body mass and dense populations. Seal pups born and raised in Arctic ice dens are another important food source in most areas. The polar bear recognizes these dens through smell and other cues and pounces through the roof to capture the young seals. And the last thing we will dwell on before the final battle is their behavior in the wild. Barbary lion males and females came together only to breed. Their breeding season is thought to have been in January. Their gestation period in captivity was approximately 110 days, after which one to six cubs were born, with three to four being the most common. The cubs were covered in very dark rosettes. Cubs stayed with their mother until they were two years old, at which point they separated. Polar bears are solitary creatures. When there is a chance to scavenge after a seal is killed, they may compete with each other. In such cases, the smaller bear will usually flee. Polar bears can dive underwater to catch prey, keeping their eyes open and their breath held for up to two minutes. They spend the majority of their time lying, sleeping or waiting. The remaining time is typically spent traveling, either walking or swimming, feeding or stalking prey. Now that we're done comparing these two predators, let's see who would win a fight. Barbary lion versus polar bear. As with any hypothetical animal battle, numerous factors can influence the outcome, including size, agility, strength, who strikes first, and who is lucky enough to land a decisive injury. Although polar bears have the size and raw power on their side, Barbary lions have been known to engage and subdue Cape buffaloes, which are even heavier and larger than polar bears, all without the assistance of the rest of the pride. Although this is a rare occurrence, it is a testament to the animal's power. Lions, as members of the cat family, have enviable manual dexterity and agility, allowing them to move with greater flexibility and speed. On the other hand, the polar bear boasts an immense degree of not only upper body strength, but also a devastating bite, powerful enough to generate sufficient enough force to break bones. The bear's substantial amount of fat and musculature also provides it with greater endurance than a lion. Lions have killed brown and polar bears in cage fights numerous times. There are more records of lions killing bears in cage fights than vice versa. Overall, the outcome of this sad battle is anyone's guess. It all depends on who gets lucky with the decisive strike. I believe a dangerous animal like a lion has a chance if it can flank and wear down the bear with quick attacks and bleeding wounds, but the odds are heavily stacked in favor of the bear. It only takes one good hit for the bear to win. The cat is always dangerous, but size and weight are against it. A lion would pose no threat to an adult polar bear. I think the lion would have a chance, or maybe two out of ten, if the bear was smaller. Otherwise, the bear would win this fight. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. Until next time, farewell.